This is Wolf Island, or perhaps it should be called Wolf's Island. We'll get to that in a moment, but you won't find it on any map because it's better known as Ulva. Islands can be like Russian dolls. I'm heading to an island off an island off the island of Great Britain. The board is to summon the second ferry, which is somewhat smaller. Good morning. It pretty much shuttles all day, except Saturday, which is its day off. Today is Sunday and the cafe is closed until noon. If you come midweek, then this cafe will be open and it's a great place to stop before you, uh, before you actually get going or save it up for when you get back because there's nothing else on the island. It's this, but it's really good. Initially, I'm just going around the corner to visit the local museum, Sheila's Cottage. Apparently, Sheila still scares the bejabers out of visiting children. But this is what I wanted to see, because Ulva is usually translated as Wolf Island, but this board suggests something subtly different. The island of Wolf, one of the Viking chiefs. If that display board is right, and it is indeed Wolf's Island, where did Wolf hang out? Where did he live? In the northwest corner, there is a dune with Viking remains. And the chances are that was Wolf's lair. So that is what we're going to try to find today. To get here, I crossed to the Isle of Mull. Then that little ferry took me onto Ulva. It's a long, rough road. They get around here by quad bike to the top left corner. That's where I'll find Dune Barn. A dune, or dun, is Gaelic for a hill fort, often built on a coastal crag. Quite a contrast to modern development, which is mainly clustered around the ferry in the sheltered eastern end of the island. It's quite a climb out of here onto the exposed higher ground of the interior. If you're enjoying this, you're sure to like other videos on this channel, so it would be great if you'd subscribe and hit the notifications, please. So now we have a decision to make. These signposts here are the main crossroads on Ulva. And if I wanted to head up towards Wolf's Wolf's house, I would go that way, uh, around the northern shore. If you're looking for views, however, you want to be on the south shore, and that's rather difficult, because the two, you'd think they'd meet at the top, but they don't. And uh, I've spoken to the boatman, and they, he said he's been through there, but it's a bit of a mountaineering expedition. And that got me pondering if there'd ever been a track right way around the top end of Ulva. I turned to the Heritage Paths website and even the 1843 OS map shows no track circumnavigating this island, so it's not for me. And neither is the route to Wolf's Place, at least not yet, because I'm taking a side trip to peer into a hole in the ground. That's been quite a steep descent, so I'm going to leave the bike here and press on on foot. I don't think it's far. This isn't meant to be a walking video. Come on, get on with it. Livingstone was, of course, the famous Scottish missionary in Africa. And he's believed to have had family connections with Olver, although we think he only came here once. However, although this cave bears his name, it is far more interesting than that. Nearly eight thousand years ago, our ancestors used this cave. The trenches were made by archaeologists from the University of Edinburgh who've been unearthing remains for 30 years. So this is a prehistoric rubbish dump. They found the remains of a human infant, a flint, ice age fauna like lemmings and arctic fox, priceless knowledge from what these people threw away. You've got to wonder if thousands of years from now someone digs through one of our landfill sites what they'll make of our society. 
A little more recent history as we're just going back to the bike. In the 19th century, something like 800 people lived on Ulva. And uh, what with potato famine clearances, all that dwindled until, well, in more recent history, there were only six people living on the island. Then I think it was in 2016, the family that owned it put it up for sale. And with the help of the Scottish Community Land Fund, uh, the community here managed to do a buyout and they're the ones making the changes to bring the island back to life for a modern world. Ulva often gets described as the remote island of Ulva. But you know, it's only remote if you look at it with modern eyes. So let's try looking at this from a different perspective. If you regard the sea not as a barrier, but as a motorway, then Ulva is just another link in a coastal chain for the Celts coming from Ireland in the south and Wolf and his Vikings coming from the north. And it still welcomes visitors. There's a bothy back there, not the sort of Mountain Bothies Association open shelter, but one that you can rent on Airbnb. There's also another one on the other side. Oh, there's a few around. But it's Wolf's house I'm trying to reach. At this time of the year, the thistles and bracken are just too high. I'm not gonna make it. But that's the thing with adventure cycling. It doesn't always work out as you expect it to. And on this occasion, I'm just not gonna be able to achieve my objective because those Vikings knew a thing or two about building a defensive home. If you can see out there, that rock, that rock is where we think Wolf probably lived. That is Dunbarn. But my ride is not yet over, because just as I reach the end of Ulva, there's another island to explore. Gometra is just around the corner. By crossing this drawbridge, that means I am now on an island that is off an island, that is off an island, that is off the island of Great Britain. Gometra is privately owned by a wealthy environmental activist and campaigner. That faded sign uh, doesn't ask you to stay away. Quite the reverse, it says you're very welcome. But it does say that please don't enter any of the, uh, the buildings unless you've booked one of the bothies uh, and also try to give some privacy to the people who, who live here. I've heard there is, however, a, a little gallery here. It is quite a spot. Tricky. There are cast off antlers for sale, some jewelry, Supplies if you're staying in a bothy. I rather like the doodle board. We need more of these. But these appealed most. Gometra is licensed to issue its own stamps. Just like the Summer Isles further north, you can buy their stamps here, write a postcard, leave some money for a Royal Mail stamp to be added, and it should end up at the right address. A very cool piece of practical artwork from this wee gallery. Well, that little gallery was uh, a bit of a surprise, really. And uh, I think, you know what, I'm going to end this video here. If you found this helpful, if you've enjoyed it, take a look around the channel. You might find more that you enjoy. It'd be fantastic if you give me a thumbs up and we'll see you again next time. Bye.